The building itself, it's believed that the crypt area that we're sat in at the moment was, was here first, and then the chapel portion on top then was on second, and then the actual entrance tower which would have come in through um, with the steps that come up through was actually then a later addition. And historic buildings are a bit like duffel coats, it's the best way to describe them. So they're, they're warm, they're thick, and when it rains they get absolutely soaking wet and the idea is, is they're so thick that hopefully the person wearing it inside doesn't get wet and the water evaporates off naturally basically that's the best way of describing and that's what St. Anne's Chapel is a lovely old duffel coat and what happened is there'd been some patch repairs done to the plaster upstairs in cement and cement goes back to that kind of polythene you know non-breathable type material and what, what we originally thought was we would take off a portion of the wall which had been done in cement and, and, do, a, and do a patch repair in in, in, in lime rent in, in um, lime plaster basically but quite early on in the process it was evident that the the damp that had been caused up at high level and some of the other problems we had meant that um, that the whole of that plaster needs to come off so that's quite a drastic decision to take to strip all the plaster off the building you know financial drastic decision but also um, from a historical point of view because you're taking off quite a large proportion of the historic fabric but we got permission to take that off so that's all above the dado level upstairs and, and that in itself uncovered a whole, whole new, new area, basically. So as that plaster came off, they started discovering quite large holes in, in the walls, basically. And those large, hall, those large holes, which, are now, which have now been, some of them have been left exposed to show some of the history of the building, are, are what, called, what are called putlog holes, which are basically the traditional um, medieval scaffolding that was used, as they basically put poles through with almost barrels either side that allowed them to build the size of the the walls up and then they pulled, pulled those poles out and they blocked them up on the outside, plastered them on the inside and just stuffed them with, with rubble. And those are basically the original holes that were part of the making of the building. So that in itself is fantastic. Um, and then the other thing, as we started taking up um, floorboards and started exploring up at high level around at the eaves, there were a whole range of discoveries which have been quite well documented now. For example, we found old pencils, old handwritten notes from when it was a school. Uh, they found original paper aeroplanes that were, that, um, I think they even predated, um, predated flight, which I thought was quite amusing. <laughs> so you had these paper aeroplanes and, 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 and all of this um, dust and debris from the previous use of the building. And that in itself was fantastic. The fact that school kids 100 years ago were still being a pain and stuffing stuff between floorboards and writing on, you know, writing on things. So, so that, that was fantastic. Um, and then the other thing that we, f we find on a lot of historic buildings is as you, as you get higher up in the building and you explore stonework and bits of roof work is you find the names of the original people that worked on the buildings. A lot of people think that conservation of buildings is all about freezing a building at a moment in time. But you have to ask yourself, what is that moment in time that you freeze it in? Because you can already see that St Anne's Chapel has been through a number of different changes. For me, it was about doing as little as possible or seeing that we're done as little as possible. That is actually a really good thing because you come in here now and you think, well, what's actually changed? And actually what we've done is we've uncovered a bit of the history that was taken place over the last few hundred years. We've added a new layer to the building which hasn't impacted on the historic fabric that's here, but it's actually aided the historic fabric that's here. And in adding that new layer, given the building a new life for the next, hopefully, 100 years, <laughs> if we're lucky, but it's, it's, it's another of the layers that's been added onto the building. And in 50 years' time, 100 years' time, 200 years' time, when this building's still here, hopefully someone else will come in and add another new layer to it. And maybe my children or my grandchildren will do, you know, come in and use the building as part of that. And for me, that's actually one of the pleasures of working on historic buildings and doing conservation work, is being a part of that historic process and part of the story of the building. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.